Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you this Nintendo Switch XL that I've built. So if you're a follower of my channel you would have seen that I've already done a few of these. I did one using a TV monitor, I also did one using this particular monitor that was called a Vincendo. But this one I'm actually most proud of because I've got all the buttons in the right place, you can really hold on to these controllers so the extra weight doesn't really matter so much. And uh, I think it actually looks pretty professional because the Vincendo, although I liked it because it's the same monitor, everything was just stuck on the back and it was a bit of a pain having to dock your switch. Well with this one it's really easy to dock, check this out. So now you can see it's on here and then if I want it to go back on here, you just place it in the dock, find its little home and then in a few seconds it will come onto here. And it will fall out if you were to wobble it, but you can see now if I was to turn that upside down, it is gripped in there quite well. So uh, it all feels pretty secure. And as you can see it looks amazing because this is a 1080p monitor. So uh, what happens is when you dock the switch, you're getting that extra boost up to 1080p. And so really in handheld mode now, this would be a good experience. As well as that, this is a 10 inch screen. So obviously it looks better. Now, of course it's not as portable. You know, you're gonna have to carry a big bag for this, but perhaps if you just wanna play it at your home and you want a bigger screen yet you don't wanna play it on the TV, then this could be something you could look into. Now you might be wondering, you know, what on earth controller this is, but you can get these really cheap off eBay secondhand. This is basically a controller from something called the Lynx Vision. And what it is, is a little Windows 10 tablet that you just slot into here and then for example you can stream your Xbox over to it and these mimic an Xbox controller. But all I've done is converted the dock thing at the bottom to USB and then I've plugged it into a portable dock. And with this particular portable dock that I'm using, it's like a fast snail one and it allows you to dock the switch with just 5 volts. So in this here I've got a power bank built into it that's outputting two lots of 5 volts, one to feed the monitor and one to feed the dock. And then out of that I've got a Magic NS adapter which the controller is connected to. So it's just mimicking an Xbox 360 wired controller. So let me just quickly show you the controls and then I'm going to show you the inside of it when I was making it because I did a little bit of video in just when I was making it just to show you two different stages. Right, okay, and also I've swapped the buttons around. So can you see here, normally on an Xbox, A would be here and B would be here, but I've done it the same as you would have on your Nintendo Switch. So A, B, X and Y. So everything matches up like it should do. Right, let me go to a system settings just to show you that everything is working as analog six and uh, the correct buttons. So if you watch this now, and also lag as well, watch. It feels instant. Okay, so you can see there, A, B, Y, and X, and then we've got our Z, R, Z, L, R, L, click in, click in, then I've got the D-pad over here, minus and plus, and then this is gonna take us home again. And now let me just show you the analog sticks. It feels perfect. So if we do this one, you can see that they are working as analog sticks. So if I do it all the way, that's fine. And then if I just do small amounts, you can see that it's just moving small amounts. And it feels responsive like you would expect it to. So some people might actually prefer this controller over the Joy-Cons because if you've got bigger hands, you can hold on to this better. Personally, I like the Joy-Cons. Problem with this one I find is that it can be a little bit crampy on your thumb because you're kind of having to bring your thumb down here. These buttons feel a little bit low, but you know, each to their own. And now if I do this one here, you will now see small amounts and big amounts. So everything's working really as it should do. See? Well, okay, let me just show you around here so you can see what's going on. So we have our monitor at the front here. Now into the monitor, I've got everything built into it and then I've just got the switch around here. So if we just plug this out a minute, you can see that I've got two little bits off the furry side of the Velcro just to stop my screen getting scratched. I have got a screen protector on it. And if you look down there, I've got the USB-C port from the actual dock. And then the controller is just basically stuck onto the back of the monitor. So the controller comes with its own cage and that's what's nice to be able to drop the switch into. And really, that is how simple it is. So if we just drop that in there, you can see that it will marry up with the USB-C port at the bottom, 
push it into it and then it will start to come up on here like that and it's mimicking the Pro Controller. Let me uh, show you down the side here. So for example now, it's running from a power bank so when you want to recharge it, what you have to do is, this is the cable we're using to recharge it. You can see I've got a bit of Velcro stuck on here and here to tuck it away and then also when you want to recharge it we just need to pull the power to the actual monitor itself. You can see that the monitor's gone out and then we just charge it up as and when we need it. Now, because the battery I've got in there is around about 46 watt hours, I should be getting around about over three hours use out of it. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. Right now, let me show you the inside of it and then I'm gonna show you some gameplay. So here we have the controller with the back of the monitor. The screen is currently off it. The screen just connects via this little ribbon cable connector here. I've put a little bit of cardboard just over the circuit board here because I don't want the HDMI or USB cables to short against it when everything's screwed back together. So we have the power bank here. This is an anchor one and it's got two outlets on it. One of the outlets is feeding the portable dock and the other outlet comes across through here and it's feeding the actual monitor itself. So the portable dock is here and the HDMI cable comes out of this to feed the monitor and here we have the Magic NS adapter and I've got the USB cable that goes through to connect up the actual controller itself. So as you can see I've had to move things about a bit, these two speakers were up here but it fits kind of nicely there and it leaves uh, still a little bit of room and a bit of airflow around the place. So just before I glue the monitor onto the controller, you can see if you look closely that this is a USB-C port from the portable dock and it just weaves through the bottom of the controller here and then it just goes into the hole in the back of the monitor and I've just put a bit of tape around it just so it doesn't get damaged where it goes through the hole. Also if you look closely you can see that there's a second cable and that's the USB from this controller itself. So originally there was a little dock down here for the Windows tablet that went into it. So I just had to convert that into USB, which is really easy. So just get a USB cable, chop off the plug, and then just follow the color code. The color code on the wires there is exactly the same as a standard USB, red to red, black to black, etc. So now when we put the, the monitors off, so it's not actually gonna dock, but the controller will work. So now even if we put it in at an angle, you can see I've got two little plastic things here and here that just stop it from falling down or wobbling left and right. So when you put it in here, you can just move it along and then you see it will just drop into place like that. And now these buttons will light up here. And you see now, if I go back to home, that this will now work. And then we wanna undock it, we just need to pull it out like that. And in case you're worried about venting the switch, if you have a look here, you can see that the vents are actually free. So airflow goes in here and then the exhaust is up the top here. So as you can see, plenty of airflow, so there's going to be no overheating going on. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit of gameplay now. And just in case you're wondering, if you did want to play this in tabletop mode, you could rest it against something and you could still use your Joy-Con. So then obviously you've got a bigger screen when it comes to tabletop mode. Personally, I haven't built a kickstand into the back, but you could do that very easily if you wanted to. Now weight off it, it's still heavy. It's a lot heavier than the switch. Remember, we've still got the switch in there as well, so you can take this absolutely anywhere. The weight off it is just over 1.5 kilos. So you're looking, I think it was 1,500 and I think it was about 60 grams. So you're looking over 1.5 kilos. So it's not light, but then if you just rest it on your lap, or even because you've got these big controls to hold on to. It doesn't feel as hard as holding on to the little Joy-Cons and you can get your hands right around here as well. So yes, you can play it in handheld mode, but it is easier when you're resting on a table or on your lap or if you're lying down in bed, kind of on your belly like this or with your arms tucked in like this and then playing it like this. Right, okay, let's show you a little bit of Mario Kart and a bit of Mario Odyssey and maybe a couple of other things. Now at the moment the volume's only 30%, so there's plenty of volume up here. Obviously if you want it louder it goes all the way to 100%. Now I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, but it just looks amazing. If you look at that, it just looks so good. Now the thing with this is there is no motion controls. Xbox controllers do not have motion control. So if you're a fan of the motion controls, then unfortunately this setup here is not gonna work for you unless you use it in tabletop mode with the Joy-Cons.
Right, so there you go, you can see it looks amazing. Let's do a bit of Mario Odyssey. So you can see how good it looks, the colours and everything just look great on this game. Right, let's move on to another one. Right, so this is Wonder Boy. Again, you can see it looks lovely. Okay. Now on racing games, although these are analog triggers, they work as analog on the Xbox, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, they're still working as digital, so they're just on and off. There's no degree of movement on it. It's just either on or off. So this is Gear Club Unlimited. Right, okay, so that is the Nintendo Switch XL. Let me know what you think of it. I really like the way it's just so easy to dock. You just see that there, and then just plonk it on in, and then it just docks itself. So, would you make one of these yourselves? Would you buy one if it was in the shops? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's pointless? Is there any need for it? Because obviously the Switch is a kind of perfect size as it is. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.